Hello folks. I decided to take a look at this very quirky camcorder from Zoom. It's a small camcorder, but it has dual XLR audio inputs with phantom power, as well as having built-in decent quality stereo microphones, and all of these inputs and microphones record to separate channels. The main reason I decided to check it out is the fact that it can also work as a webcam. So I wondered if it could work as a complete audio and video setup for streaming or similar use. In other words, could it give you a face camera while also acting as an XLR audio input for a high quality microphone? So let's talk about it. First off, it immediately became clear that anyone just looking for a general use camcorder would do well to look elsewhere. This isn't a good video camera with a zoom audio recorder built into it. This would be better described as a zoom audio recorder with the absolute bare minimum video capability tacked onto it. The functionality is essentially that of a very cheap, very basic action camera. And actually comparing it to a basic web camera is probably more accurate. It has fixed focus, fixed aperture lens, no optical zoom, extremely limited digital zoom, zero image stabilization, and the only adjustable video setting is resolution and white balance. It doesn't even have an exposure compensation adjustment. Video quality is simply not great. It has a max resolution of 1080p, which is actually fine with me. I record most of my content at 1080 anyway, and a camera with good quality 1080 can capture some very detailed images. Unfortunately, the video from this camera isn't good 1080. It's clear that the lion's share of the $400 price is going to audio, not video. And like many small sensor video cameras, the quality drops quickly as the light drops. And since you can't control a single aspect of exposure manually, you're stuck with whatever the camera gives you. Even the ergonomics are bad compared to a standard camcorder. There really isn't a grip on this camera and there's no strap or anything that's really designed to fit your hand. And the record button is in a surprisingly awkward place so that it's really easy to accidentally press and it presses very easily as well. I've started and stopped recording accidentally while holding the camera. The bulky mic attachment point in the back gets in the way and makes the balance feel unnatural. The lens has a very wide viewing angle and a moderate fisheye distortion to it. This camera would benefit greatly from some type of lens hood to keep light from being able to kind of come in directly onto the lens. And since that lens does actually protrude a little bit, it, there really is, it's really hard to get a good angle where light isn't causing at least some contrast loss if there's a bright light in front of the camera anywhere, even if it's not actually in the frame. The flip out display is a touchscreen, but it's a very low resolution and it is very prone to glare and the viewing angle isn't that great. So it kind of washes out if you're not looking at it just right. The way I see it, if you're looking for a general use video camera, even much less expensive camcorders from Sony, Canon, or Panasonic will dominate this camera in all things video. In fact, even a DJI Osmo Action at half the price of this camera is way better for video. And the Osmo Action even has an optional audio input accessory. All right, so now I'm standing in my backyard. I'm recording with the Q8 at the highest resolution setting, and I have a Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone connected into the, you know, one of the XLR ports with 48 volt phantom power. And this is how it sounds and this is how it looks. And now for comparison, I'm recording with a DJI Osmo Action camera. I've got a Rode VideoMic NTG plugged directly into the Osmo Action. And this is how that setup looks and sounds. Granted, none of those cameras will hold a candle to the audio capabilities of this camera, but you can always get an external recorder or something like that to improve your audio. But if you buy a camera with terrible image quality, you're, <laughs> that's all you're going to get. In other words, the Q8 has excellent audio capabilities, but it isn't a good video camera. But what about a specialized use case? What if you wanted a streaming camera that could also allow you to connect a high quality XLR mic to your computer? I'm now recording here in my booth with the Q8 camera. The camera can provide phantom power so that you can use a condenser microphone, but I decided to connect just about the toughest challenge mic possible, the Shure SM7B. In fact, up to this point, all the audio in the booth was recorded with the Shure SM7B, 
but up to this point it was recorded through an audio interface and into my laptop, but now it's connected directly to the Q8 and recording into the laptop over USB just like the video is. So you're currently seeing video from the Q8 and hearing audio from an SM7B connected directly to it. I did have to download a special audio driver from Zoom to make the audio work, otherwise I got no audio from the camera, only video. But once I installed that driver, I get both audio and video from the camera when connected with USB. The camera is also powered via the USB port, so it's a pretty convenient setup. But is it worth it? The video resolution when running in webcam mode is supposedly 720p, but it's nowhere near actual 720p resolution. In fact, it's almost ridiculous to call this 720p. I tried different setups and multiple settings, and what you're seeing now is the best I could get it to look. By comparison, here is some 720p output from a different camera, also recording directly into OBS. And the difference is night and day. I'd say the Q8 looks more like 360p at best. I mean, switching back to the Q8, just look at how jagged and pixelated the top of my monitor is on my laptop. Clearly not 720p resolution. There's also some noise in the Q8 video as well, despite the good lighting. I mean, I have two LEDs pointing straight down at my desk here, so the lighting's not really going to get any better than this, short of just direct sunlight. If you'll just be putting a face cam up in the corner of a screen or something like that, the resolution might be okay, but even the 720p webcam on my laptop looks better than this. Overall, I can't recommend this camera. As a general use video camera, the audio features are obviously a high point, and if it was just a matter of the video quality not being very good, that would be one thing. But unfortunately, just about every aspect other than audio is terrible. From the poor ergonomics to the complete lack of video features and settings, it's a disappointment and a non-recommend. As an all-in-one USB video and audio setup, I really don't recommend it for that either. For the price of this camera, you could get a basic but good quality audio interface, such as the Scarlett Solo there, and still have plenty of money left for a decent webcam. My guess is that even a cheap webcam would beat the Q8 in video quality. The Q8 is a fairly simple, kind of all-in-one solution, but it's not a good one. There's just too many other better options out there these days for this to be worth it. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.